Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of our mouths and the thoughts of all our hearts be now forever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Across at the rectory, uh, beneath the table in the lounge, is a little collection of uh, the dog's toys and chews. Uh, and one of the little moments of lightness or of joy even in our day is when he, with an almost solemn air, goes under the table to pick out the thing he wants to play with or to chew on. He seems to do this with quiet deliberation and a good amount of consideration. There isn't anything there that he doesn't like. Uh, equally, he does have a few favourite things. But he doesn't get the same thing every time. He really does choose Although by what process, I can't begin to imagine. But then I shouldn't be surprised by that. I don't even understand my own decision making at times. And I want us to think about making choices today and picking favourite things. One of the most popular radio shows since 1942 is Desert Island Discs. You'll probably all have seen it or at least know about it. Each week an invited guest is asked to imagine that they're to be cast away on a desert island and can only take with them eight pieces of music, one book and one luxury item. And that's something by and large that I would find very difficult to do. The luxury item wouldn't be too tough, it'd be a motorboat. But the others would be incredibly hard. When I think about music, I'm hard-pressed to choose one of my favourites, because I have so many. There is my favourite tune or tunes today, which will be different from my favourite tunes yesterday, and will be different from my favourite tunes tomorrow. I have my favourite happy songs and favourite sad songs, my favourite soulful songs and my favourite rock songs. How can I choose between When a Man Loves a Woman by Percy Sledge or A Town Called Malice by The Jam? That's something that you might find very easy to do, but for me, it would be very difficult. How do you choose between Champagne Supernova by Oasis or Sit Down by James? It's impossible. I could, of course, pick all four of these songs, but then that only leaves four more places. And I haven't even begun on Otis Redding, The Beatles, The Kinks, David Bowie, U2, Aretha Franklin, Richie Havens, Nina Simone, Jimi Hendrix, or Take That. Well, okay, possibly not Take That, sorry, Gary. How am I, how am I meant to choose? Any eight tracks that I pick would leave out eight others that I might, in a slightly different mood, with a slightly different frame of mind, have jumped at. How can I boil down the whole of popular music to just a few meagre choices? And the books are even harder. I've read thousands of books, some of which have made a lasting and even life-changing impact on my life. How can I pick out just the one? It'd be like going to a great groaning banquet table and being asked to pick just a few measly crumbs and then declare myself satisfied. Which brings me somewhat neatly onto the subject of harvest. What is the thing that we are choosing to give thanks for today? Now on an obvious level, we give thanks for the harvest of nature. The bringing in of the crops and the promise of food for another year. That's a sentiment that comes through in our harvest hymns. Such as the first verse of one of our favourites. Come ye thankful people, come, raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in ere the winter storms begin. God our maker doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come. Raise the song of harvest home. But that isn't all that harvest is about. And our other most popular harvest hymn 
makes the point that it isn't simply about this year's produce. The final verse of we plough the fields and scatter. We thank thee then, O Father, for all things bright and good. The seed time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. This extends our thanksgiving beyond the simple harvest, beyond this one moment in time. And we thank him for all things bright and good, for our lives and our health. So this hymn recognises that the harvest, as well as being something in its own right, also has a wider symbolic significance. The harvest is representative of everything that God gives us. And this is realised in the second part of that verse. No gifts have we to offer for all thy love imparts, but that which thou desirest, our humble, thankful hearts. If we choose to focus on just one small, though vitally important, part of harvest thanksgiving, we ignore the greater picture. But thankfully we're not being asked to pick just one or two things to be thankful for at harvest. This year, when things have been especially difficult, when we've been forced into isolation, when we've been forced to limit our contact with family and friends, this year when we've truly grown to understand and to know what's important in our lives, there is all the more need to join in a thanksgiving for all things. To limit it to thank you God for our food is to miss out giving thanks to God for our life, our health, but also our families and our loved ones, our security and shelter, our skills and talents, our personality and humour, and also those of those whom we love and value so much. Truly, it is only when a thing is taken away that we truly appreciate its importance and true value. So, as we celebrate harvest today, let us give thanks to God for all the ways in which he has expressed his love for us, even over this past year. We don't need to feed on the crumbs that fall from his table. For God in his great mercy and love gives to us generously and abundantly. And all that he requires from us is our humble, thankful heart.